In video number one we built a gateway to send LocoNet messages to a cloud-based message broker. Using the MQTT dashboard app we were then able to see the messages on a mobile device. Unfortunately the messages are hard to read and understand as they are displayed in the JSON format that is used in the data transfer. Also they are coming in in batches every few seconds. Of course it would be much better if they came continuously and with minimal delay only. So the goal for today's video is to build a Loconet viewer that displays the messages faster and in a more reliable form. Hello YouTubers and welcome to the Internet of Toy Trains. I am Hans Tanner and here is a new episode of IOTT with fresh ideas about how to use the Internet of Things along with sensors and microcontrollers to control a model railroad layout. So, get on board! The train is leaving the station! Dealing with a lot of data, filtering out the information and present it in a user-manageable format is a standard problem in IoT, the Internet of Things. And a good part of the progress seen in this field over the past few years comes from the availability of standardized solutions and easy-to-use tools to solve exactly this type of problems. One of these IoT tools is called Node-RED. I am going to use it in this video to sort out the LocoNet message data and present it in a format that is more usable to work with. In Wikipedia we read, Node-RED is a flow-based development tool originally developed by IBM for wiring together hardware devices, APIs and online services as part of the Internet of Things. And a few lines Lower on the page, in 2016, IBM contributed Node-RED as an open source JavaScript foundation project. Great! This sounds like a solution for our problem, so let's try it out. Node-RED can be installed on many different operating systems. For my LocoNet system, I have it installed on a Raspberry Pi 3 along with my MQTT server, but for the purpose of this video, I am running it on a Windows 7 computer as this is probably the configuration most of my viewers are using. Just follow the installation instructions on the Node-RED webpage. They work with no problem. I have added a link to it in the comment section below. Once the Node-RED server is up and running, you can use a web browser to connect to it. Point the browser to the machine that runs Node-RED and add the port number. The Node-RED user screen will load. Now we can try if we can connect to the message broker that has our LocoNet MQTT messages. Place an MQTT input and configure it for broker.hivemq.com and the LN in topic. Then place the debug output and connect the two elements with a line. Click on deploy and you will start seeing LocoNet messages appear in the debug window on the right side. These are the messages that come from my test layout. As you can see, they now do no longer come in in batches, but each message comes individually as it becomes available. Which means our problem number one is already solved by using Node-RED instead of the simple MQTT dashboard app. And you may also note that the time delay is barely noticeable. Pretty impressive, particularly as we are using a public server that can sit anywhere in the world. Before we start building the LocoNet viewer, we need to do one last configuration step, and this is installing some dashboard components. Those are components that push outputs to the mobile device display. To install them, follow these steps. Click Manage Palette, then Install. Enter Dashboard in the search field and look for a search result called Node Red Dashboard. Click the Install button and confirm the installation. You now have a Dashboard tab in the Output window. Click the tab and then add a tab called LocoNet and a group called LocoNet Viewer. You also can rename the Flow tab into something more meaningful, e.g. LocoNet. If you now open the web browser on your mobile device and enter the IP address of Node-RED, the port number and then slash UI, you will see a welcome screen to the Node-RED dashboard. Now everything is ready to get started with the viewer. To keep the video short, I go through these steps fairly quickly. If you want to follow, you can always stop the video to keep up. Also, 
I have posted a link to the complete node red code on my GitHub page. You can download and import it so you don't need to do any programming. The first step is to convert the JSON message into a JavaScript object, which is easier to work with later on. This is done with a JSON node. The next step is to interpret the opcode in the message and create a string. I also prefer displaying everything in hex format instead of decimal, so we place a function node to do that and we need to write a small procedure inside the function node. In this code, we first iterate through all elements of the message data and convert them to hex, building up the param string. Then we look up the, the opcode and set the opcode string. All opcode names are defined in the Digitrex Loconet PE document linked below. Finally, we build the complete string with opcode and parameters and send it as payload in the outgoing message. Now, we place a text display element to show the string in the user interface screen. I call it newest as this will always show the latest message. Now, connect all nodes to a flow and click on deploy. If you have a look at the user interface display on your mobile device, you will see the messages coming in. And they come in a format that is readable for us, at least if we understand how Loconet works. So, our problem number two is solved as well. That's really not bad, but it would be even more useful if we would see, let's say, the last 10 messages listed instead of just the last one. Guess what? That's no problem at all. We just need another function that does the logging and then we send the log as a list for display. This can be done using an HTML template node. Let's place those two elements on the screen. The function code is simple to program. First, we read any previously stored log and then add the new message to it. If the length of the record is more than 10 elements, we eliminate either the first or the last element of the array depending whether we display the first or the last message on the top of the list. Finally, we store the updated array and send a copy of it as a payload to the template. The template contains a simple HTML sequence that iterates through the log and displays all available lines. That's it. Let's click deploy and then see the result on the mobile device. Not bad. Next, I think it would be good to have some sort of a start-stop button so that we could stop all trains immediately in case of an emergency and then let them continue once the problem is resolved. As I did not find a good on-off button in the library, I searched the internet for node red button templates and found some nice buttons from Pete's Cordial. See the link below. Pete maintains an excellent tech blog and has a lot of Node-RED examples. So I imported some of the code into my template and here is how it looks like. In this HTML code we display a rectangle, a frame and a text based on the value of payload. And when the button is clicked we send a message containing the same payload. Simple. Just make sure to uncheck the two checkboxes right above the template code Otherwise, the message will go round and round, finally crashing node red. To make the button change status, we need to make sure the payload is changed to the other value and sent back to the button, so we add a reversal function, connect it and click deploy. See how it works. Now, let's find out what the DT400 throttle does when we click on power plus or power minus. Obviously, the plus button toggles between GP on and idle, while the minus button shuts the power off. So we place a function that actually creates those Loconet messages based on the button status, either GP on or idle. Next, we pick the opcode based on the payload and then create a complete JSON string containing the message. Finally, we send that payload to the LN out topic from where it goes to the gateway. Yes. That's correct. For the first time we are sending a message back to the control system and it is as simple as receiving. For the moment we can use the LN out topic to do so. In the next video 
I will talk a little bit more about communication strategies between the gateway and network clients, as in reality, and particularly for larger systems, it is a little bit more complex. Anyway, click deploy and see how it works. You can click the button and you will see the message appear in the LocoNet viewer once it has been sent to the layout and is echoed by the gateway. And looking at some locomotives on the track, we see them stop and go again. Cool! Almost done, but there is one more problem to take care of. What happens if the user clicks the power button on a DT400? Right now, this is not updated on the user interface. So, let's change that. If the user clicks power plus or power minus, we will see either GP on, GP off or idle messages. For our purposes, we treat GP off and idle as the same. So, we add a function that listens on incoming messages and scans for one of these three messages. Depending on the message, it then sends either a zero or a one or nothing. Then, we send the message straight to the reversal function, which then will update the status of the start-stop button. Click deploy and try it out. And yes, it works. Changing the power status on a throttle will be correctly displayed on the mobile device. Very cool! And really not complicated to do, right? So far, so good. With only a few simple programming steps, we have a working LocoNet viewer on a mobile device, which is quite useful if you are sitting under the layout trying to find some errors in the cabling. But what happens if someone else would like to see the information at the same time? Well, no problem. The user interface screen can be open on as many devices as your network router allows. No superficial limit to say, four devices. And furthermore, no dedicated access point, which means that your mobile device remains fully connected to the internet. You can look up stuff, or you can use other apps, like for example an intercom app, to talk to other operators at the same time. On the user display, there is one limitation though we should be aware of. The display output is generated on the Node-RED server not in the browser. This means, if several devices display the same tab, e.g. the LocoNet viewer, they will all show the very same information. This is great for unique resources, like the LocoNet viewer, where we really expect to see the same information on all devices. It also works for other signal resources like programming track, fast clock, slot status monitor, etc. And we will build some of these gadgets in future videos and add them to the Node-RED user interface. On the other hand, it does not make sense to use this technology to program a throttle, for example. When the throttle is opened on several devices, we expect that we can use it to control a different local address from each device. This is not possible with this technology. But don't worry, there are other solutions we will discover in the future. So, here is a summary of what we have done in this video. We installed Node-RED on a local computer connected to the network. We have placed a few simple nodes to receive the MQTT messages, convert and display them as LocoNet messages, either as single message or in a list showing the last 10 messages. We have opened the user interface screen on a mobile device and can see that information. If you have to do some debugging under your layout, this might be quite a useful tool. Then we created a start-stop button, which now sends information back to the layout and we see this in the LocoNet viewer as well. We saw that there are no hard limitations regarding how many devices can be connected. It depends on your network. And we understand that we can use Node-RED for displaying information that is the same on all attached devices, but not for things that are different. In the next video, I will talk more about the gateway itself and how to set it up. We will also look into some details of the communication strategy and what we need to consider if the network grows. I posted a few links in the section below from where you can download additional information about Node-RED and how to set it up on your computer. I also posted links to all external resources I referred to in this video. 
If you like this video or find it useful, please click that like button below. And if you would like to be notified when a new video becomes available, subscribe to the IOTT channel by clicking the subscribe button below. Finally, feel free to leave me a comment below with additional ideas or questions about the topic. Thanks for watching.